Hi everybody, this is Todd Oltoff with ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at the software update service that is built into Maverick Server. Now software update is Apple's way of pushing updates to your computers. Uh, it usually pushes uh, major uh, point releases for their operating system. Uh, also for things like iTunes and iPhoto and some of the other software uh, updates that are there. And so it's a, it's a service that uh, most of us are used to if you've used a Mac for a while. Now, with the uh, change in how things have been working with the App Store now, with the Mac App Store, uh, now what happens is, is we've got a split between the software update as well as the caching uh, items of where you update things. So, for instance, software update usually happens through uh, the Apple menu where you would get a pushed update that says it's time to update your computer. Now, with the Mac App Store... You'll get your some of your updates will come through the Mac App Store itself, and so these two services are functioning together, um, but they're also functioning in separate realms. And so, therefore, uh, in server, you'll notice we have a software update service as well as a caching service. So I'll cover the caching service on the next uh, go around, but we're going to talk about software update this time. Now, with software update, uh, what typically happens is, is your computer uh, pings Apple's server and finds out that it needs an update and then returns a message saying you need to update. Then you click the uh, update button and it goes and downloads the actual software uh, that needs to be updated and then runs the update. Now, that can take up a lot of bandwidth if you've got multiple Macs on your network and everybody is downloading another copy of the update for each individual computer. What Maverick Server does with the software update service is says, hey, let's download it once on the server. Let's basically store those updates and then have all of the other computers in your network go to the server to get the updates instead of having to take up bandwidth downloading it from the Internet. And so that is one of the benefits of using the software update service. So what I'm going to do is show you how to, update, how to use the service and uh, just give you some tricks on, you know, uh, customizing it a little bit to fit your needs. So here, this is the software update service right here. And you'll notice we have no access right now because the service is not on. Uh, I've got two tabs. I've got settings and updates. So in the settings area, I've got basically two modes that I can use. I can use an automatic mode, which basically updates, you know, downloads all of the updates from Apple, uh, and they're immediately enabled for your clients. So in other words, it will download those updates to your server and immediately make them available on all your clients so that they can uh, basically tap your server to update their machines as well. Now, this is uh, the simplest way to do it. It basically just kind of runs and you don't have to think about it. But sometimes you get those updates that cause problems. And all of a sudden you realize they've caused a problem. And now if everybody in your household or on your small business has downloaded uh, the update, now you've got problems on all of your machines instead of just one of them. So they also give a manual uh, option here where basically what that does when you check manual is you can choose which updates you want to download and which ones you want to enable. And uh, they're basically uh, saved until you decide you want to delete them. Up here, updates that are no longer supported by Apple are removed. On these ones that you manually download, they're going to be there till you decide to delete them. Now, depending on your strategy, uh, you might want to use uh, manual. Uh, for me, manual is, is what I'll probably use on this, uh, just to show you what it looks like, because this way you can select which ones to download. Uh, which updates, and then when to enable them. Uh, with the automatic, you're going to download Apple's entire catalog of updates, and that's going to you know, fill up your drive pretty fast. So uh, manual is a great way to go to make sure that uh, you can limit what is downloaded and what's put in your server. So those are the two options we have there. On the updates tab, this is where we're going to... On the updates tab here, this is where we're going to see the actual updates as they come in. And so we have the option here to automatically download new updates. That means as soon as a new update happens, it's automatically going to be downloaded. Or you can choose to manually do that yourself. And then you can see down here we've got uh, the option to uh, download, download and enable, enable, disable, remove an update, or view updates. And then you can also check for updates on here. So I'll show you what that looks like once we get the service started. So let's just go back here. And I'm just going to throw the switch for the service just to get that started. So let's do that. Okay, so you can see that the service is uh, up and available now. You can see that we've got it available at my server right here. And uh, t you can see uh, how to configure the service if you want to by clicking on that. So let's go over to the updates. You notice that now it's reading the updates. And so it's going to go through the process of reading what updates are available. And it will start to display those right here once they uh, become available, once it's had time to read them. So what I'm going to do is let it, uh, let it do its reading for updates. And once it's done with that, we'll come back and see what it looks like once it's filled all of this in. 
Okay, here we are back on the software update. And as you can see, it's now filled in uh, a number of updates that uh, are available uh, right off of Apple servers. And you can see if I just scroll down, you can see all of the various updates and things that I could download uh, going back uh, pretty far here, 769 updates. And so as you see, if you add all of this up, it will take uh, gigs of data, which is why I chose to do manual uh, instead of actually download them, uh, you know, have them downloaded automatically. So now as you look at this, you can go through the list of the different uh, updates that you want to do, and you can actually enable them. Uh, so for instance, you got the, the Safari update uh, that came out here on 4.1.14. Uh, I've got a couple of options. I can either come down here to the wheel down here, and I can download, or, and then that just downloads it. It doesn't enable it. I can choose to download and enable. Uh, I can choose to uh, view the actual update, uh, and if I just uh, you know click on that, it'll take me in and give me a summary of what the update is, what it changes, uh, the different things that uh, it's trying to uh, to do with that update. So that's kind of nice. It gives me all of the notes on it uh, right in here, and you can see I've got. The, I can also set it in here whether I want to download and enable right from the wheel right there. I was going to say cancel. And so now if I come in here and I decide this is one that I want to download and enable, I just come over here and on the side I can do the same. And let's just download and enable that one. And you can see now that it, now it's waiting. And pretty soon it will start that download process and uh, make that update uh, available. And so uh, again, it could take some time, depends on your bandwidth, depends on uh, you know just a variety of factors. But the nice thing is, is you download it once and then it's available for everybody from that point on and you don't have to have it downloaded multiple times. So, uh, so anyway, so that gives you, uh, gives you an idea of how uh, the software update works. Uh, like I said, uh, it's nice to be able to manage it from here. It can make it a little bit more efficient for you. It's a, a pretty simple service, but like I said, it does save you bandwidth. Uh, what we're going to do in the future screencast here is we're going to take a look at the caching server and compare those uh, up against each other. Uh, where the software update is more of your system updates and those kinds of things, the so uh, caching server uh, updates all of your various software and things that you have through the Mac App Store. And the Again, downloads those once, and then everybody doesn't have to re-download them again when they want to update. So we'll cover that in a future screencast. Uh, one more thing I do want to show you before we go is I want to show you where uh, Software Update stores uh, those cached up updates. Uh, if you just go into uh, your server there, you want to go to your library, uh, and then into the server folder, Software Update, and then your data is stored in here. And you can see there's a data folder here, uh, HTML, you've got your content in here and then you've got your downloads and uh, it stores them in its own database so they're kind of a, a funky view here but if you look you can kind of drill in and then you'll see your various updates uh, that are stored in here so that's kind of where it stores it just in case you're wondering and like I said it is on your main uh, server drive and so uh, you want to take that into consideration when you do set this up okay let me put this down here uh, one last thing is setting up your clients to actually use uh, the software update. Uh, and as you can see there, once I put that down, now the update that I had downloaded does show is downloaded and it's enabled. Uh, in order to get your clients to actually use your server uh, instead of doing their own downloads, uh, what you're going to do is on the client, there's two ways you can do this. Uh, one is if you wanted to use uh, Terminal, you would just go in on your clients and you type in this sudo defaults write backslash library preferences backslash com.apple.softwareupdate uh, with a space and then catalog URL uh, with another space and then HTTP colon two backslashes your server's name with a colon 8088 uh, backslash index dot uh, su catalog and once you hit that uh, and put that on your computer it basically takes that client and points that client at your server now to download uh, the updates so that's one way that you can do that a couple of other things that you can do with the terminal if you wanted to is if you wanted to uh, change the port number you didn't want it to be on 8088 uh, you would just do another terminal command sudo server admin uh, settings colon software update colon port and then with a space to use equals and you put in basically the uh, port that you want to use and that'll work and then if you want to get rid of all of these different updates that you have back here you just kind of want to purge those out it's another sudo server admin uh, sw update colon and then purge unused all one word equals yes and then that'll purge all your unused uh, software updates in there if you wanted to sort of free up your space uh, on your server from the various updates you've had in the past that have been uh, cached on there
So that's one way you can do that in terms of pointing your clients this way. Uh, the other way you can do it is, as I showed you in the Profile Manager uh, tutorial, you can do it uh, inside Profile Manager and then push the actual change uh, to your uh, device, and then it will basically change where it looks for its software updates. So that's probably the easiest way to do it, but if you'd like to do it in Terminal, uh, this is how you do it right here. So hopefully that helps you, uh, you know, get that set up so you know how to get your clients set. So that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac.